welcome to Kitchen Chat. This is your host, Margaret McSweeney, here in the beautiful Viking and Log Cordue showroom in Chicago's Merchandise Mart with my wonderful co-host, Jamie Larita, who is hey brand ambassador for Viking. And we are both so excited about today's guest, who needs no introduction, <laughs> Gabby Dalkin. Welcome to Hi, Kitchen Chat. thank you. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, this is so great. And Chef Jamie, I have to say, it's so exciting. I don't think you two know what you have in common. Oh, geez, what could this be? Yes. You both have cooked for very high profile okay. musicians. Oh, yeah. So can you share <laughs> with us a little bit about that? Are they the same musicians? <laughs> I mean, no, mom. they're not the same. I, I was Jessica Simpson's private chef for a number of years, but it was not during her musician days. Okay. It was when she was like, well, she still is like fashion mogul, superstar. I mean, can you believe, first of all, how big she got on the no, fashion industry? No, yes. but what's so funny about her is I can vividly remember being in high school and wanting this pair of Jessica Simpson shoes, and I didn't buy them. Me too. And I was so <laughs> mad about it, so I went back to the mall to get them. And then on my way home, I got a flat tire, and it was the worst day of my life, but I felt okay about it because I had heels in the back but it was if Aww. I had just gotten them in the first place it wouldn't have gotten a flat tire so the moral of the story is always buy the shoes always I mean, buy the shoes I'm right. fully on board with buying the shoes Aww. we just bonded on many, many who did levels. you cook for oh my god I mean I've traveled the universe cooking for um, everyone from the Rolling Stones to Madonna Sting Steven so Tyler fun. Josh Groban Barry Manilow the Stone Temple Pilots, lots of musicians, and I also do a lot of design work for them. So, whose palette is most like yours? Food That's wise? a great question. Yes. Um, I would say that probably no, not probably. I wrote my first cookbook with Sarah McLaughlin called. Oh, Bunty. cool! And her and I resonate on many, many levels. Yeah. Um, she can, as you know, Sarah McLaughlin can, mm -hmm. you know make you cry at a moment's notice. Oh, but, all the um, time. Especially the angels. angels. <laughs> everybody, I mean, I wish you would have never done that commercial. It's, it's very, it makes you go do something. Yes. It makes you donate. Yeah, it's for sure. It's but actionable. I, I think to answer your question properly, Sarah has such a big palate for food and she yeah. loves everything. I could have made her uh, a yogurt parfait, a smoothie, or a pizza. She gets so excited about food, I love and that. so do I. Yeah. So I think that's the answer. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. we are so excited about your food and this cookbook. I'll make sure we have a link to her new cookbook. It is just inspiring. Thank you. Just inspiring. And Jamie, I loved that she started with oysters. Yeah. And <laughs> that was, and I was Is that just, the first recipe? Um, well, I don't it was know in the beginning. I don't know how I ended up with the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is with the oysters. And it just really Oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> Leave it to Margaret. Margaret McSweeney knows all. <laughs> no, no. But she knows Don't. everything. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was so surprised about, you use rice vinegar and you call them min mignonettes. The mignonettes, yeah. Mignonettes, yes. Mignette. Mignettes? Min I don't know. I wrote it a while ago. I don't remember. <laughs> so <laughs> rice vinegar and oyster. I never yeah. would have thought. What? How does that work? Well, it's just like an unexpected acidic flavor you know normally people use red wine vinegar when, the, when they're making sauces and i feel like it's a nice little asian spin oh i th have you ever cooked with uh, rice vinegar yeah i mean on oysters i like any kind of vinegar right? I mean, you can use red wine vinegar you can mm -hmm. use champagne vinegar yeah. vinegar and oysters but would you ever do a balsamic vinegar you know, I would. You would? Yeah, I would. Okay. With, I would do like balsamic vinegar, like right now in my head, you said that. So right now, immediately, I want to go to like really heavily caramelized onions. Yeah. Mm. Oh, into that. Yeah. For and, sure. And like then, balsamic, balsamic caramelized yep, onions on yep, top of an oyster. Yep. Yum. Yum. Ice let's, cold. Let's make this a reality. Let's do it. So with like a little <laughs> bit of like maybe charred roasted pepper with that on an Yum. oyster. Yum. <gasps> Dollop a sour cream. See how my mind goes right yeah, to food. Yeah, I'm into it. Maybe we can write it. That <laughs> would be amazing. <laughs> Done. But my question for both of you, how do you shuck the oyster? That just seems so challenging to get that shell Margaret, pride open. Margaret, I am dying to see you shuck an oyster. <laughs> that's going to be a topic on Kitchen Chat one day. Answer the question. I mean, you just use one of the, the shucking knives and okay. you have a very like a padded glove or something so you don't cut yourself. Okay. You open it up, pry it open, flip it over. Gabby, you have to see on, uh, if you follow Margaret, and I'm sure you do, 
Margaret, the other day, I was watching her on her Instagram and on her Facebook. She actually lopped off a, um, a bottle of champagne. Do you saber it? Saber champagne with my broken, with broken shoulder. shoulder. Oh no, my that, God. Um, with like a sword or With a chef huge friend? sword. Cool. Yeah. For James Beard? No, this was for Lee Dom. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. you'd be like, no, this was for Wednesday night. So <laughs> she had just gotten, she just had gotten the sleeve. Yeah, it was a typical Wednesday. It was she just got the, yeah. She just had her like sling removed and then she's like, oh, would you like to come to this event with me? And then I see her sabering a bottle of champagne. I'm like, that girl can rock. And it worked. Good for you. That's impressive. But I haven't shucked an oyster. I'll so, teach you. Oh, that would we'll be get so some fun. Oysters. I'll teach you. Wonderful. So if you guys don't mind, I'd like to dial it back a little bit. Yeah. Let's okay. go back to when you first started getting an interest in food. And what was that moment where you like had that spark? What was the spark that made you go, hmm, food? Um, well, I never intended to be in the food world ever. I was pre-med in college and I wanted to be a doctor and save lives and go live in Africa and the whole nine yards. Um, and I got to OCHEM in whatever year of college that was and I was like, this sucks. I do not want to continue this. I called my parents who are both in the medical profession. I was like, not going to happen going into business. Um, and I just started cooking for my friends on the weekends. I was on the tennis team because I really loved sharing. That's how I show people I love them. Um, now, was that when, did you have any sort of inspiration no. beforehand? I mean, no, I grew up watching Food Network. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. I, like, Rachel Ray taught me to cook oh, okay. for sure. Oh, and, and have you met her? Once, very briefly. Oh. Yeah, like long, long ago before I was in the food world. Um, and I went to culinary school. At, well, no, sorry. I skipped, a, I skipped a few years there. So I went to, I switched from pre-med to business. Uh, I started cooking for all my friends and my family at school. And then... After college, I moved down to LA and I was working in the fashion industry, hated my job, and decided, screw this, I'm gonna go to culinary school. Went to culinary school. What culinary school? Yeah. Um, it's closed now. It's, okay. It was called Academy of Culinary Education. Okay. It was like a smaller six month program. Yeah. I did pastry school on, on back of that. And I started working as a private chef and I started my blog the same week I started culinary school. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So I never, and even in culinary school, I had no intention of being in the food world. I just really wanted to learn how to cook for me, my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband. And I don't think it was well into private chefing that I was like, I can, re I can do this. Um, so there wasn't like a specific moment for me. So you had, you had this um, blog. Mm -hmm. And now when you look at like, I love your Instagram page. Nice, and you, yeah. I love how your boyfriend, now husband, yeah. on your Instagram page has... Talk about that for a minute. <laughs> With Thomas's new account? Yeah. So Thomas started an account called What's Thomas Eating? And it's just Love basically it. to make fun of everything I do because my Instagram is very pretty and it appears that I am very like semi put together. <laughs> Thomas just likes to share the other side of it. Um, and he has like better engagement than I do. It's so funny. Um, so yeah, he just started that a couple weeks ago. So I have, my husband at home is a great eater and he's mm -hmm. a great cleaner and he knows how to make like blueberry pancakes. Oh. Is there anything that he actually mm. is good at? Like one dish that you Thomas makes on? a killer margarita. Oh, well that's important. Yeah. But yes. in terms of cooking, no. <laughs> now what is his favorite dish that you make? Uh, chicken Parmesan, for sure. Okay. In any form. So I make chicken Parmesan traditionally. I make chicken parmesan meatballs, which are chicken meatballs stuffed with mozzarella cheese and like this mm -hmm. parmesan topping on top. And then in the book, there's a chicken parmesan farfadelle, which is like a ground chicken mixture with like these big, fat, beautiful noodles and cheese melted in. It is, I'm pretty sure that's why we're married. Who doesn't parm. love, and I mean, you can stay married based on chicken parm. Basically. I have a recipe that I want to share with you Tell sometime me. with roasted cauliflower that I use in chicken parmesan yes. as the topping. Oh. And it would make you feel like you're getting mouthfuls of cheese. I'm uh, into that. It's wow. so super, super. We good. just got back from safari last year and we were, my mom grew up in South Africa and we were visiting mm. her friends one night and they made us cauliflower parmesan. No chicken, just like cauliflower steaks cooked, breaded like you would do a chicken cutlet yeah. and cooked like yes. parma chicken parmesan and it was out of this world. Yeah, this is a, oh. this is a combination that yeah. is the chicken with into that it. and it's, it's pretty delicious. So yeah. into it. Do you still put cheese on it? I do, just a yeah. bit. Okay. Just a bit to give you that little bit of like cheese moment. Yeah. But it's primarily mostly 
roasted um, cauliflower that I puree, a little bit of cumin, turmeric, yes. um, and Let's some cook oregano. Together. Yeah, That's you're gonna nice. love this recipe. I'm so Absolutely. excited. And that pizza and oven. And you'll too. savor champagne. I will savor the champagne <laughs> as we savor the day. Exactly. So we're so excited to have you in yes. our Viking La Cornu Thank Middle East showroom. I'm moving in. You should move I, in. But only if I can sleep next to the pizza oven. You are gonna be you are gonna be <laughs> sleeping right next to it so comfortable and warm. Actually you're so great. tiny you can fit in that pizza. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'll give me a tan. Yeah. A little, a little a little bit of like roasted skin never hurt anyone. Golden brown. Oh my yeah, so we're, we we love we love having Shame you me. in golden brown. I love the way you just went with that. I love having you here. We love having you in our Yeah. Thank you. And it's we're beautiful. so excited about your cookbook and what's Gabby cooking and that's the name of course on Instagram and yep. everything. And I love to First of all, the photos are incredible. You just want to eat off of Thank the pages you. of the book. I love your concept of bowls, mm -hmm. and you really have influenced so many people. Yeah. Can you share with us what inspired you to prepare these meals in a bowl? Well, we so Matt and Adam are two of my best friends in the whole wide world. Matt is my photographer. Adam is my stylist. They're they're married, and I just like inserted myself into their relationship. And I'm oh, just, so you, you already have a set of gays. Yes, <laughs> so I do. We but can't interview. We but can't they're interview in LA. That. Oh, so can we like be your, Chicago, can we be your Chicago gays? for sure, oh, without a doubt. Done and done. Go ahead. So I've just like inserted myself into their relationship, and they're like my second husbands. I love that. Um, but Adam once made a comment in passing, and he's like life it like everything tastes better in a bowl and I was like you're right because you can sit on the couch and like binge watch Game of Thrones or Peaky Blinders or something and just like have it in a bowl and, yes. I, and it just got me thinking like food is better in a bowl and when you I like to mix everything together like I don't eat everything beautifully like portioned on my plate um, so we just started doing bowl recipes and everyone on the blog loves it and so we turned it into a chapter in the book. And it's delicious. Oh, it, it's Thank very you. inspiring. Thank you. And what do you think would be something that every home chef should have in a pantry? Oh man, well there's a whole section at the front of the book with pantry items, but the top, let's say, three things that come to mind for me are really good olive oil, Maldon mm. sea salt, and Maybe it's not three things like a like a variety of vinegars. Yeah. I feel like you can make I, a lot I of things. with all of those, right? Yep. And like maybe some grains like quinoa, and farro, yeah. rice. You exactly. gotta have all that and totally. some spices. Right. I'm just like meant visually going through my pantry in my in my brain. Oh. There's a jar of M and M's. When you come over, when you come over the your new gay's house in yeah. Bucktown, we're gonna show you our spice bowl. You're gonna be. Oh my inspired. god, is it alphabetized? Hello. And, magnetized. <laughs> and magnetized. And magnetized. Yes. So this is great. I have such a great um, appreciation for what you're doing. And I love your um, dedication to uh, what it is and where you're growing. Now, this is what's happening right now for you. This is what's new. Mm -hmm. And this is what's now. Can you tell us anything about what's next? That's a great question. And so many people have been asking me that on this book tour. And totally honest, I have no idea. That's great. Like, I feel like I live in this very digital, you know, this digital food world and there's new technologies popping up all the time. There are different shows happening, new platforms that are being started. I have no idea where What's Gobby Cooking will be in the next couple of years. That's great. I feel like you're, if you're living in the moment and you're right on the edge of creation, yeah. that's exactly where you it's should be. It's fun though, but definitely but more do. products. I have to say, these, and don't they match so perfectly with well, the set and your cookbook. One day I want to have a whole rainbow. Like I need a green one, I need a purple one, I need a pink one, so I have to come up with some more spices. But this is my most recent product line that came out. It's a line of multi-use seasonings. Mm -hmm. It's carried exclusively at Williams Sonoma. So this is this is everything. So my version of the everything bagel spice. I love that you say here it's for avocado toast, hummus, salads, veggies, and more. Right. That you singled out the avocado yeah, toast. Yeah, obviously. Because yes. I'm I'm a millennial. Like it's yes. important. To and know. your first cookbook, <laughs> of course, was, was all always, about avocados. Yes, right. yes. yes. So that one's everything. This is called all things meat, and then this is Gabby's go-to. So it's just seasonings you can use literally on anything. This is like pork, chicken, beef ribs, you name it, this you can use on vegetables, fish. I mean, literally this can go on all the things. Yeah. Fabulous. And Kiki and I were actually at Williams and Sonoma picking this up and picking up some Thank of your books you. today. And they said it was out the door, the lines of, of people wanting to meet night. you. Chicago, and we were just talking about this. Chicago's the best. And 
girls waited in line for three hours last night. It was oh. incredible. We had a DJ, we had margaritas, we had food. Like it was a full party. It oh. was so much fun. Chicago so has fun. that t that type of energy. I travel with a lot of musicians, like we talked about earlier, and every single time we had come to a city, I would even tell the artists, like, I can guarantee you, your audience is going to be better yeah. than in the city. You always think it's going to be LA or New York, but it's yeah. always. Chicago. And I think Chicago just has like I have. I think it has a lot to do with the lake, and then you know that it's not New York and Chicago. People are a little bit thirsty or for mm -hmm. like someone especially that has a lot of frequency. Yeah. And speaking about frequency, mm -hmm. I really want to do um, uh, a couple of or ask a couple of questions about, you know, what is your advice for somebody out there today that's maybe a little bit older mm -hmm. than you are, not the millennial, yeah. maybe myself, <laughs> and then <laughs> somebody younger than yourself to get like, well, we look at your social media following and it's grown tremendously. When did that happen Thank and you. how fast did that happen? It's been a slow, slow roll and I wish that wasn't Ooh. the answer because I don't think one thing I've done has really, you know, catapulted me to the next level. I think, uh, like I started What's Gabby Cooking back in 2009. Okay. And it's just been nine years of like steady growth. Well, and I, I feel like it's good timing. It's yes. great timing, but I will say the one thing you could do no matter what age you are, I think is really cultivating your audience. Like I've spent the mm -hmm. last three years, I will respond to every DM, I will respond to every Snapchat. I, when people like video chat me on Thanksgiving because they like undercook their turkey, I am there for them. Like I make myself very available. That's really great. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important because a lot of people don't. And when you when you do make yourself available, people will continue to come back. It's yes. such a it's such a and, and that's so amazing that you're dedicated. And I'm the same way. Like to your the people that follow you, you want you almost feel um, a little indebted to like yeah. want to be able to be there. What for would them. I be without them? Exactly. Yeah, like so that's I'm great. like there's no point in me doing what I do without them. And to be perfectly honest, I don't mind giving up my Thanksgiving to help troubleshoot because by the time Thanksgiving rolls around. I've cooked it so many times for the blog and everything. All I want are tacos. <laughs> like I'm not actually having a Thanksgiving turkey. Thanksgiving <laughs> tacos. I yeah. love it. And do you well, like mac and cheese? Oh, like yeah, yeah. my family's so chill and they when I recipe test they like will fly in so they can taste things. So they don't care that we don't have Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving either. <laughs> no, I think I think Thanksgiving to me is um, you know, I love the traditional mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, but I agree with you. I think Thanksgiving is all about just really good food, no yeah. matter what the yes. flavors are. Yeah, are. and wine. Yes. Yeah, and lots of wine. <laughs> and being grateful and sharing yeah, yeah for that sure. gratitude. Now, on Kitchen Chat, we have such a heart for charity. Is there any organization that you'd like to share with us and the listeners and viewers about yeah. what's important and why? So I do, gosh, I support a couple different charities. One is Heifer International. Mm. Um, they do a lot of uh, micro economies, so they'll find communities that need goats, and they will ra do ra donate money and ra raise money and donate money to this family and like gift them a goat. Like I can make a donation, I can give you a goat for Christmas. Oh my and God, it, I want a goat. And it <laughs> goes to this family, let's say in Ethiopia, and this family uh -huh. in Ethiopia will raise the goat and milk the goat and sell the milk for money, for profit. And then when the goat has a baby, they gift that and pay it forward to another family in need. And so then there are all these goats and everyone's making goat cheese and goat's milk and the communities really become like self-sustaining. Yes. Um, so that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm trying to think of what else. I love No Kid Hungry. Mm. Um, that's a big one. I've done a lot of work for them for the last couple of years. I started the Food Blogger Bake Sale a billion oh. years ago, and food bloggers across the country would have a bake sale on the same day at the same time, and all the money would go to No Kid Hungry. Um, we haven't done it in a couple of years. I got a little busy. <laughs> Just a little. It, I got to bring it back. Um, yeah, and then anything that's about conservation, especially, mm -hmm. you know, animals in Africa really into it wow you're such on this amazing like path and trajectory trajectory to like cooking success I really look at you as somebody who's really on it as far as Thank the timing you. and the, the, I went through your cookbook really really fast and every single page I was like oh I would make that I would make that I would, do that. I would do that and in a lot of cookbooks you see today um, I have to be honest a lot of them did you hear me say that before no like I talk about that all the time I get cookbooks 
every day from publishers because I write a lot about them on my blog and I want to make three recipes in the book. And mm. that's so sad to me. Yes. And I really, when I did this book, I made a, like, we made a conscious effort. Me, Matt, and Adam were like, we want every recipe to be usable. Everything's approachable. We want it to be beautiful so people can really cook their way through the oh, that's whole That's really book. funny. Yes. See, I had not heard anything about we're that. We're basically spirit animals. We pretty much are. It's, it's already, <laughs> so it's, it's what it's kind of spirit animal? <laughs> I am definitely a unicorn. Oh, I, I'm a cat. Oh. Ah. I like to nap. <laughs> <Cute>. <laughs> Okay, so I have so many cat like that. I got, there's so, I'm like, I went right to the litter box and I got it all the way there. I was thinking what kind of food would she eat if she was a cat? What about oh, you, no. Margaret? I don't know. What would Margaret be? You're so kind. A bunny? No. <laughs> No, bunnies are, no, what's like a, like a mama bear? Like, I feel like you're so welcoming to everyone in your life. I would, some sort of animal that's very nice. You wouldn't be a cat. My cat is a bitch. Is she? She's yes. a diva. This is the second time the B word has been used on Kitchen Chat in the last week. I love it. Thank you My very much. My cat is nice. I am the salty and the pepper. She's more the sweet. So when you say these things, you have to look at me. I'm done. Because Margaret, oh, I'm... Margaret clutches her pearl right away. <laughs> so, and he's tattooed. Yeah, so she's like, oh, my stars. Like, yes. Bring, so, it. bring it. Well, I love that you're here. I yes. love getting to know you better. Thank you're you. so sweet. I have such Thank a crush you. on that little sweet lisp that you have. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, I just want to I just want to be you right now. I, wanna, like, <laughs> I feel like a little stalker. No, so, I love it. Thank it's, you. It's really great. Oh, and I love being nice. able to, like, I love when we went through the tour of the Viking mm. showroom. Okay. And you were I looking at all the appliances. Each, each kitchen has has a different persona right and I can't decide where I would live but I think I would live here in the middle ah. yes okay that's your that's our uh, Viking 5 series vignette yeah where we have but I but I want the Tuscany no oh, I the want Tuscany. the Tuscany Me too. The Viking and Tuscany. I need a pizza oven in the backyard From Lynx. basically I need a house and I need you to be my best friend and we can do it together <laughs> this is fun this is what we're going to do so. and you will save your champagne I will save your champagne all day long <laughs> and then we'll have Kiki come over and entertain us with all of her fun we'll go food zip stories lining. Yes. we'll go zip, zip lining. lining oh my it'll be amazing so wait in Chicago you've been here for a couple of days yeah. have you eaten anywhere great Girl, girl and the Goat which yes. is the Goat Oh, Amazing. Yes. I had the burger at Oh Cheval. Oh. So, have you guys been? Hello. Oh, How happy. do you think I gained the 35 pounds that I Stop was? it. You look perfect. Well. It was everything. Um, randomly, there's an ice cream shop a couple blocks down from that. I think it's called Cone. Mm. Have you heard of that? They have Cookie Monster ice cream and it's bright blue with, with black like specks in it. I don't know if it's Oreos. It might be Oreos. I think it's Oreos. And you get a scoop this size on the cone and I, I'm like a nine-year-old on the inside so it was giving me all the feels. Okay, so guys, oh. I've been juicing for the past couple of weeks. I think I just wet my pants a little bit. I was oh just my. like, oh my God. I just <laughs> wet, crushed her pearls. She crushed her pearls. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just love ice cream so much. It's, when you're not juicing, you should go to Cone. I'm juicing Let's right go now. To I'm going to fact check this and make sure that's what it's called when we're done. But it is the best ice cream. And your tongue turns like bright blue. Oh, like you fun. are literally a cookie monster. And I'm not. It's the color of this. Yeah. Wow. You have me a cookie monster. Absolutely. We'll I mean, so, 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 so. So anywhere else that you want to eat? Or how, many, um, how long are you going to be here? A couple more days? No, just like 12 more hours. I leave oh. tomorrow for oh, Minneapolis wow. on my next stuff, my book tour. And then Matt, my best friend, and I are going to Texas next week and we're road tripping around Texas. Oh, and I'm a little, I'm glad we did this today because next week I will no longer have cheekbones because all the queso will be consumed in all of Texas. <laughs> and like these, no highlighter can do me any favors after next week. We're going to tune into her. We <laughs> yes. want you to post a picture yes. of yourself on your Instagram well, after the Matt and I will live like broadcast it. Okay, we'll do it before yeah. and after. It'll Oh, be, so we'll be, it'll be a full disaster for six days straight. You are so, oh. so much fun. This and we love you. We love you. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, I always like to end the show with getting three tips for the home chef. Oh, okay. Um, I would say, one, always have lemons. Because oh. I think lemons add flavor to everything. And beauty yeah, to I the... Know. Go figure. <laughs> well, uh, number two, have a really great sharp chef's knife. Okay. I don't think you need 100 knives in your kitchen. I think you just need literally a chef's knife. Like, I never even use my paring knife. Do you? Mm -mm. Like, I mm. never use no, it. No, it's funny you're saying this. I, like yeah. it. I resonate with all this. And then, number three... 
Oh, I, it's not a, I would just say cook with confidence. Like the worst that happens is you mess something up and you have to throw it away. Like that's not the end of the world. Right, you could right, always right. order pizza. Learn. That's how you learn. Yeah. Like when in doubt, order pizza. But until then, like just <laughs> go for it. Pizza is everything. Oh, I walked yes. by Luminal, Luminali, what's it called? Yeah, Luminal, Lumin, uh, it's Luminalinati. There you go. There you go. On the way here, I'm sorry. Like you're juicing. This is a terrible really conversation. I'm like, right now I'm just saliva. <laughs> and, and I wanted to get some so bad. But anyways, I think being confident in the kitchen is yes. a huge tip. And I think it can really um, like liberate you in terms of That's so true. You know, it's so true. I, I, I always say that there's a little bit of a fear. People like are afraid to cook fish. They're afraid to screw it up. I'm like, so get another piece of fish. Yeah. You know, take the fish that you burn and turn it into a, a salad or do fish something. Fish tacos. Yeah. You know, when I got my first job. <laughs> For Thanksgiving. Job, yeah, when I got my first <laughs> job as a private chef, it was not Jessica, it was a different family. And they were like, we love fish. And I'm like, that's hysterical. Never cooked fish, never ate fish in my entire life. I was the pickiest eater <laughs> growing up. And I started my job and I, and I was like, I don't, I have no, culinary school week fi fish is until week three. So I was oh. like, oh my God, I have three weeks, I just have to wing it. And I look back at pictures I took and it was the saddest piece of baked <laughs> cod. It was like, there was no char on it. It looked just like, but, but, but now look at you now. Well, yes. yeah, but Janelle. like back then, I was like, I'm shocked fish, I didn't get fired. Her fish doesn't look like that now. On right. Like she is the uh, Chanel of cod. She is. <laughs> My mind just exploded. <laughs> oh, this has just been so much fun. So fun. Thank, Thank you. you both. This was awesome. Well, Absolutely. Great. We, um, we're so happy that you were here. Chicago loves you. I heard you had such a great turnout. Good luck with the rest of your Thank book tour. You. Well, I'm quitting. I'm just going to live here. Oh, so. oh all right. Sorry. The tour's over, guys. Sorry, it's, Minneapolis. It all, it all ended <laughs> again here. Absolutely. And our next cookbook will be coming. <laughs> well, speaking of cookbooks, everyone, check this out. We'll make sure we have links. What's Gabby cooking? Fabulous recipes, Thank beautiful you. photos. You will be in inspired in your own kitchen. And don't forget to use this on your avocado toast. Yes, yes. channel yes. your inner millennial. <laughs> I love it all. And thank you so much, dear foodie friends, for joining us on this joyful journey here in the Viking and La Cornu showroom. And always remember to take a moment and savor the day.